In this episode, we talk about one of our favorite topics, and that is caring for your soul. Soul care. Mm, yummy. I'm Sienna. And I'm Toast. We're partners in love, life, and music. And we've been together since 2001. With each episode of this podcast, our goal is to help our fellow LGBT community members lift their lives to the next level. Hello. Hello, dear listener. <laughs> this is Toast. I wonder if I scared anyone. I hope not. I hope I didn't that scare anyone. That wasn't the intention. That was not the intention. <laughs> this is Sienna. Hope you guys are doing great. Today we have an episode we're very excited about. We are going to be speaking on the topic of soul care. The care and feeding of the soul. Hmm. This is my favorite topic, actually. This is the this stuff is of the life. topic. Really. That's true. Yes. Right? Yes. All right. But before we jump into that, we have some notes and reviews from the community. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard in my head like a, yeah. you know, people clapping. The Muppets. I envision the Muppets. No, I heard in, like a, oh. I heard like, yay. You know, like people clapping. Yeah. But anyways. <laughs> so anyways, why don't you read it, Toast? All right. Well, big thank you to M. Naito Designs who left a mysterious sounding review for the podcast on iTunes. It begins with a word of caution. That's literally the title of the review. A word of caution. <laughs> then it goes on to say, I'm so glad you girls are back. But I do have to say, if anyone is listening at work and the office is relatively quiet, do so with caution. There are so many LOL moments. I've startled my staff on more than one occasion <laughs> with a loud outburst of laughter. I love the LGBT topics, but also all the other relevant topics from serious to downright silly. Love you girls and thanks for making at least 20 to 30 minutes of my work day pleasurable. Ah, that's so nice. Thank you, okay, M. Naito so Designs. We have spoken about M. Naito Designs before because of her amazing uh, artistry. She's an artist and she does pet portraits as well as other All types kinds of portraits. Of an, but, yeah, the specialty is animal. Yes. Uh, super. It looks like Practically looks like, like black and white photography. Like yeah. It's awesome. And um, so she really, what I feel is so valuable about her work is that, you know, there are many people that do pet portraits, but I feel like Myra M. Naito Designs, you can find her on Instagram, she really captures the soul of the animal through, it's something in the eyes and how she does the eyes. But, um, but we love her. And also, you know what I love? How come you're just you're what? not, you're what? not oh, saying oh, words? Oh, they can't see People me nodding my head. head. Okay, okay. <laughs> they can't see my eyebrows going up. <laughs> I love that she thinks the podcast is funny. Yeah, yeah. Don't you? Yes, I do. You don't seem and too startles thrilled. her staff. Yeah, I mean that <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. All right. You seem kind of so, quiet today, Toast. Well, I'm waiting to see if the the uh, offer is going to be made of like, hey, contact us and, you know, we'll send you something. Who's saying that? Us. Oh, us. Are going to say that to M. Naito Designs? <laughs> yes, we okay, are. Okay, okay. Yes, we are. Well, it's a new thing for us, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's something that um, we might forget. And if we forget, just speak up. Uh, yes, so Myra, M. Naito Designs, contact us if you would like a little treat from Sienna and Toast. We would love to send you a little something as a thank you for taking the time to write such a kind review. We really appreciate it. And we know that, you know, it does take time. And everyone yeah. is so, you know, we all have a lot on our plate. And um, so we truly appreciate it. Also, too, something that's important is when we did the podcast before, many, many moons ago, seven years ago, right? Uh, we did, we also had some very generous people leaving reviews. So right now, the reviews that are at the top are from 20, tw no, 20, I'm going to look right now. Okay. There, it, it says something like 10 years ago, you know, or like. It just seems like we're not 
um, doing the podcast anymore. Oh, okay. It still seems like that. So if you only look at the reviews, you mean? Uh, y- correct. Okay. Correct. Because I don't know why some reviews are flush to the top. Are they the most popular reviews or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I wonder that? if it's the ones where people say, was this review helpful? And then you oh, click yes. Oh, okay, You know, okay, okay. I think. Yes, yes, That's yes. what I guess. Yes. See, like this one, the one that's flushed at the top now when I'm looking on my phone using the um, podcast app, is it says 12 years ago. So to me, that seems like we no longer do the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's so like that's why, ancient history yeah, in but that's internet why, land. That's why I think the, you know, if we can get more current reviews, mm-hmm. maybe all of those kind of get pushed down. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's my, that's my thought. But regardless, that's, that's our thing. It's um, the mystery of <laughs> online reviews, et cetera. Yes. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's right. What does that mean? What is that? Latin? Anyways, we don't know. I don't know. I'm Somebody Google. Google it. I'm Googling. Okay. So if if uh, oh, you would like to, me work. if you would like to spread the word about the podcast, <laughs> then yes, please do leave us a review at uh, the iTunes. Probably is the best place. But you know what? If you actually like do it the old fashioned analog way and just tell somebody like with your voice and your mouth to uh, meet a person in front of you, hey, that's great too. We appreciate that. Okay. Oh, before we get into this topic, uh, just wanted to let you know if you didn't already, if you go to SiennaandToast.com, and that's Sienna with one N, you'll see that we have a blog that accompanies this, this podcast. And sometimes we'll finish recording and we'll post this episode and the audio is out there. And then we realize, oh, we wanted to add some information or a, or a photograph or a video or something to accompany that episode. That's what we put on CNNToast.com. So just to let you know. And you can also sign up to get our emails and, and stuff like that on our site. Are you ready for what Google says? What does Google say? Okay, so what Google says is, etc. Translated literally from Latin, so you are right, et means and while cetera i'm sure i'm sure it's not pronounced yeah, right. that way <laughs> means the rest so and, and the, rest, the rest and the rest and the rest, rest. okay hmm. there's there's so much maybe i'll here. start saying instead of instead of writing etc then maybe we can start saying and the rest possibly <laughs> anyways all right all right so we have a new uh, segment we'd like to bring in. And we decided we'll be calling these segments that we're just going to drop in as they happen in our lives. And as mm-hmm. the ideas come up, we're, this yep. one is going to be called Mysticism for the Soul. <laughs> Otherwise known as, what is that, the iPhone? <laughs> It's from the classic collection of tones, but we thought, hey, that sounds kind of mystical. All it right. does. I like that one. for the soul. I like it. And the reason we're bringing this in is because, well, soul care, right? We're, we're talking about caring for the soul today. And we know that we have had these types of experiences, and you do too. We can bet you've had these types of experiences also, where you just have a heightened realization of your integration with the rest of creation and you have a heightened experience that reminds you hey you're in this ongoing never-ending eternal conversation with the rest of the world with nature with with the wind with trees with with birds in in this next case we're about to tell you birds and it was a very very simple thing this just happened like last week and uh we were just sitting in our living room well we were having some arguments we had been we had been having some arguments okay right okay yeah i mean not okay these weren't the not to the point where these I'm, the, rec- I'm remembering like yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah remember in my it. memory, it wasn't like wow, we were having this really bad argument. No, no. But okay, well, for for several days, we were stuck on 
Tost and I were stuck on trying to get on the same page for a creative work that we were doing. We were just on different pages with that. So, yeah, I guess it wasn't an argument. We just couldn't find the... We the couldn't land on the same page together. The communication together. was rocky. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Like, yes. we knew we were on uh, the the same page somehow, but somehow there was... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, Maybe we it was just, just like how it is now. I like, right now, we're <laughs> trying to explain it, and we're messing it up. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> But anyway, okay, okay, so here so we what are happened. Yeah. sitting so you... on our couch in our living room, and there's a big glass sliding door with a screen element to it that leads out to the backyard where we have a bunch of trees, and there were these really loud, chitter chattery blue jay birds that were just squawking and squawking and squawking. Yep. I mean, like really loud, like. <laughs> Yeah, I can't and I can't imitate them. <laughs> no, like, <laughs> was it like that? I don't know, but they were really loud. Maybe like that. Maybe. I don't know. They I'm were not... so loud and it was like, goodness. Like, Pretty what, continuous. What is happening? Very, very continuous. Yeah. And then Toast had a great idea. She goes, I wonder what. Did what you the... say that or did I say that? <laughs> Someone said, someone said, I wonder what, what these blue jays are trying to tell us. Yeah. What and does it I, mean? What does it mean? What are, what are these birds? What is the message from yes. nature yes. that is, is trying to drop into our, you know, our sphere? Yes. Right. Our particular sphere of beingness. It, it, obviously, there's these really loud blue jays that just are not shutting up. So let's pay attention to that. Let's take a clue. And let's find out, let's get a little curious yeah. about what yes. this might mean. So then I looked up Blue Jay Animal Medicine. I'm the Googler in the house. Uh, so it says here, in animal medicine, the Blue Jay resonates truth, faithfulness, and solidarity because they are vigilant in their tasks. They also keep the same mate for life. Which is symbolic of endurance, patience, and loyalty. In the spiritual realm, the Blue Jay speaks of clarity and vision. But here's, okay, so not only is that message so applicable to what we were experiencing, but as soon as we looked it up and read it out loud, they stopped. They quieted down. They just went away. I don't know what happened to them. And and we would like to but think it, that it's because, okay, we, we got, got the message. The message. <laughs> so anyways. So that was our moment of mysticism for the soul. Yes. Oh, I didn't have it ready to play the song again. Oh, well. <laughs> anyways. <sighs> okay. So now why don't we talk about soul care? Yeah. Soul care. Okay. Mm-hmm. I love this topic. Mm, I Me love too. it. I love it. Okay, so Me too. first let's define what we mean when we say what is soul care. Right. So the first part of that, obviously the word soul, what I'm talking about when I'm using that word soul is specifically, there's two parts to it. Specifically, it's that part of us that feels when we describe something as a music being soulful or or food being soulful or an atmosphere and an ambiance being full of soul or a conversation being full of soul. There's something it's, that you're, you're touched by something. Yeah. It's like... Yes. It's that part of us that that is made in the image of God. So there's a yes. divine aspect to it. There's this eternal, yes. transcendent thing that you cannot really put your finger on. Right. Because it's immaterial. Mm-hmm. It's eternal. It's it's not something that you see with your eyes. It's something that you sense with your soul. Yes. That's specifically. And then in general, I would also say that the soul encompasses the physical as well. Right. The soul I, I, encompasses the self. Yes. So when you, so we can even, well, do you want to talk about what we mean by care? 
care, like nurturing, like cultivating, like husbandry, uh, stewarding, you know, cultivating, watching over. And treating yourself with compassion. Yes. Really yes. caring. Like treating caring. yourself with compassion. Because so I think care. I think most people are more familiar with self care. In our day and age, I mm-hmm. think yes, that's self care. So self care when you think of self care, you what might come to mind is like exercising, taking your vitamins, you know, things like that. Making sure you go to your doctor and have all of your visits and exams and things like that I think a lot of people think of that as self-care and even to things like oh getting a pedicure for some women mm-hmm, right sure um, maybe men too some men maybe get a yeah, pedicure sure. um, or a manicure or whatever uh, so all a those manicure. things like getting your hair done or, or whatnot all of those things for the self caring for the self which tends to feel more like the human self the physical form Mm-hmm. Where soul care goes beyond that and it touches on the immaterial part of yourself, the godlike part of yourself. And relevant to our LGBTQ podcast thing, mm-hmm. I would say the soul is the part of us that feels that gender. Yes. It's, it feels masculine yes. or it feels feminine. Yeah. You know, and it's caring. And having compassion uh, and and revering and honoring that aspect of the soul as well. And I believe I believe that that feeling of being masculine or feminine, that is a reflection of the image of God as well. Mm. You know, the yin and the yang, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the feminine and the masculine, respectively. That's good, Toast. Thanks. That's very good. <laughs> that's so what that's it means what, to me. That's what we're talking about when we're speaking about soul care. And so, for instance, well, why don't I tell them about how I used to do those card things? Yeah. 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 So, you know, when Toast and I moved up here to Portland, moving from California to Portland, when we started the packing process, I have this giant, actually, I have these two giant um what they're not rubber meat containers but they're these containers that have they're not that giant they're like yeah they're giants well you we, i couldn't fit in it oh you well, know yeah. how they have yeah. those <laughs> rubber meat containers and like i could fit in one of those you know <laughs> okay well two large <laughs> containers that have have all of my journals in there there's like journals and just all kinds of things that i deem to be sacred Um, also when I was packing those things up, I realized that those covers weren't fitting correctly. So I was trying, I had to open them up and kind of rearrange things in there. And it was then that I saw, wow, I have journaled so much in my life. And not only that, when I was shifting some things around, a few cards fell out and I was like, what is this? And they were really cute. So I found all these cards and They were all random, no envelopes, just a beautiful card, all different. And when I opened them up, it would have the month and the year and all of these things that I was focusing on for that month, Um, both self and soul care, you know, so it might be things like exercise, blank times a week, drink this many glasses of water, but it would, it would also have things like, you know, pray and do forgiveness or, or whatever. Um, and each card had some overlapping things, but what I found is that, wow, I am missing out on this aspect of soul care, you know, choosing. I remember when I would, uh, purposefully go out before the next new month and look for a card that I resonated with, like something Mm. beautiful on the cover, right? Then I would buy it, and then before the next month, I would fill it out so that I would would have something beautiful and new to focus on, um, on my altar, for all the things I was manifesting and working towards and focusing on for that particular month. And I realized, like, wow, I have not done that in so long, and I used to do that for my soul care, And even the journaling, 
you know, a lot of that went by the wayside and the quality of journaling, you know, really sitting there losing time and just kind of, you know, losing track of time and writing and writing and writing. And, you know, the longer you sit and write, you'd be, I think, well, anyways, I find myself pretty surprised at what comes up, Mm. you know, because so much of the beginning when you're, when you're starting to journal, you're kind of still breaking through the layers and the voices Mm. and then Mm -hmm. stuff really starts to pour out. Mm. So I start, I realize that, wow, I'm just playing on the surface here Mm -hmm. in my journaling and I haven't even been doing my cards, which is something that really served me before. So I saw how a lot of my old soul care practices really went by the wayside. So this is what I'm currently working on, bringing all those things back. I haven't brought the card um, soul care habit back, but I definitely have gotten back to journaling in a deeper way. So, And that, you know, that really speaks to how if we're not intentional as individuals and if we're not intentional about putting ourselves into a larger community that values yes soul for care, sure yep i'm telling you our society in general it it doesn't value soul care in general yeah right i mean it holds up things like that could be seen as self-care i would say you know mm-hmm. uh like go to the spa and take this vacation and, you know, try this exquisite recipe yeah. and, and stuff like that. Um, but without, without a healthy soul, you're either, one, not going to do those things because you're not valuing your soul enough. And so you're not going to care for it. Or two, if you do those things, there's going to be, I would say, a feeling of chasing something, chasing some kind of golden experience that you're hoping will come because you took the trip of a lifetime or a vacation or you, mm. you made a certain amount of dollars. You're using it to or, fill a void, yeah, a deeper yeah, void. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah, exactly, and, exactly. And that's the thing, too. Like, I felt... When I saw all of these cards, I was like, wow, I was reminded of how I used to feel when I was when I was doing uh, having that aspect of soul care in Mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reminded of that. And for a moment, I was like, wow, I felt detached from my soul. Not doing those practices, Mm -hmm. but not really having uh that visceral experience of comparing, you know, until I found those cards. Then I was instantly brought back to the person who would write those cards. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, oh my gosh, I felt way more connected to my soul than I do now. You know, and I think that's one of the benefits of soul care. As you nurture your soul, you really do have this more, this deeper connection with that part of you. Yes. It's it's that feeling of connection to the divine, feeling that connection to the life Right. force right? right the force of life that is that is in our blood yeah yeah and really what's so important about the soul care is that when you are making time for those things you really are saying something about your worthiness mm-hmm. you are stepping into the worthiness Mm -hmm. of yourself, of your soul by prioritizing. Right. So at the time, so here's a question. So at the time in your life where you were journaling in that deep way and you were Mm -hmm. doing those beautiful cards for yourself every month. Yeah. What kinds, like, why do you think you did have those personal rituals that connected you with the divine. Why did I have them at that time? Yeah. Like what else were you doing in your life that you feel supported that? Oh, well, I, I feel like, I don't know which came first, (laughs) but I do feel like I was able to manifest with greater ease by doing these rituals, by doing these, um, you know, activities of deep soul care. And I think the main reason for that is because I was more connected to my soul. So I could, I was looking and listening and open for the cues, 
right? Like, is this the right direction? You know, am I on the right path? Um, I need help. You know, I want to know, you know, what's the best way to go about X, Y, Z. And I would receive the answers. My life was a lot more smooth. You know, there'd still be challenges, but I would know that a challenge was just for me to look at and learn and not to stall me, you know, Hmm. not to be a stalling thing, but just to look at, learn, receive a new way, possibly, Mm -hmm. and then take that direction. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what got me starting to do it, but I kept doing it because I was getting results. Got it. So it was like a virtuous cycle that that, that fed itself. Like the practice led to experiences, which led to you continuing the practices. Oh, and what I will say, though, is that the environment definitely how we were living at that time, Mm -hmm. definitely um, supported soul care of this nature. Mm. So I remember, you know, when I was thinking back, like, God, why did I stop doing it? I actually stopped doing it when we stopped doing music. Mm. You know, so to me, that was important to realize because we, you know, doing music was also um, something that fed my soul. Mm-hmm. Right, and right. I think music of, itself does connect us to that. Yes, to that transcendent music period. Thing. But even the people doing the music, there's something that you know, versus being primarily a listener of music. Mm. But the doing the music really does feed your soul in a certain way, and if it feeds other people's souls, that's even more of a treat. But um, so doing various things of soul care, I think they feed off of each other, and without this this big part of doing music and that really fed my soul I feel like it was it broke the foundation a bit for me Mm. you know and now that we're doing music again it's like it's interesting that even though I made this realization of not doing this soul care back in November Mm -hmm. of last year um, it's only been the last couple of months that I'm bringing these rituals back for soul care Mm. but it it goes right well with how we've picked up music again. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think it really is important to look at various ways that you care for your soul, you know, because it's going to be different for everyone. There might be that's, some overlaps. Yes, but, that's what I love about it. And I think that's another difference between the soul care and self-care mm-hmm. is like, oh, I feel, true. Like, yeah, I feel yeah. like with self-care, there can be such a thing as a formula or a recipe it's like here, follow true. follow this particular checklist. Mm-hmm. You know, get your checkups and eat from this food pyramid and mm-hmm. exercise this much. And you yeah. know, it's it's kind of like a just color by numbers thing. Uh, versus, I think soul care. It's so individual. It just really reminds me of the the hero's journey, mm-hmm. right? Each one of us is on a super unique journey of our lives. And we each have our own individual, very specific relationship to the divine. We have a specific yes. relationship to what we feel our mission in life is and mm-hmm. what what we, what we feel called to. Right. And same thing with our gender, right? How we feel um, masculine or feminine and in what way and in what aspects and what areas of our lives. It's... It, it's so individual and that's what I think is so special about it. It's like you can't you can't look to somebody else for a formula for it. Right. For, you can't look to somebody else and be like, just tell me what to do. Right. No, you have to uh, go within and and you have to open up and open up the lines of communication with the eternal yes and that's not to say that you're completely on your own good luck whatever you know (laughs) i think there are there is such a thing as uh, feeding and surrounding yourself with uh a a kind of cultural support Mm -hmm. which is what i believe ideally churches would do (laughs) right all right um and honestly it, it's what CNN and I would like to do. Absolutely. I mean, you know, this is this is one of our favorite topics. 
This is what we're doing with the podcast. <laughs> it's all about soul I mean, everything, care, really. Everything we've talked about so far in the podcast has something to do with soul care. And um, it's just, it's so important. And the reason why it's so important is, you know, when Toast mentioned earlier that with self-care, um, you know, it can come down to a formula. Is that what you said, formula? Yeah, or like, like a here's formula, the list recipes. of things to do for self. I mean, you know, that's so true. And yet, I think a lot of us can identify with not taking the best self care steps right. in our lives. Yeah. You know, so still, even if it's spelled out for us, why don't we take care of ourselves? Right. Yes. I'm talking about the self here, not the soul right now, right? So it's like, yeah. why don't we take care of ourselves? Yeah. And it truly is because of our self worth. So to me, your level of self care will directly correlate with your level of self-worth. Mm. And it's not to be down on yourselves if, if you're not good at self-care. Um, and I say that from experience because it's absolutely one of the things I totally struggle with, you know? And, you know, if you go back to, okay, well, why is my self-worth all messed up? And you go back to the wounds and all of that stuff. Yes, you can do all of that. And I think it's good to do all of that in some way, shape, or form. But... If you take a leap over to one or two things that you know feed your soul, and it might take some self-discovery to find out what those things are, and you just commit to one thing for your soul, it will be so satisfying on this other level that you just can't really um, explain, you know, because it's something you're going to be doing that's f actually feeding that part of you that needs the life force that needs the life force. And when you feed your soul, it helps to heal your self worth. And then it makes that list of self care activities a lot easier to approach and do, mm. you know, but feeding and satisfying the soul through soul care. I mean, it's just, there's nothing else like it. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, I just thought of something. Maybe there are a few things that are a little more universal. Okay. Yeah. Um, that speak, that all speak the language of the soul. And I think maybe being out in nature is one of them. You know, it's just because nature is God. Nature is divine. It's how we evolve. It instantly knows, I mean, talk it instantly about knows the language of your soul. Right. 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 So when you are out in nature, I would say that most of us, just feel nourished mm. you know you're yes. refreshed I, you know you're what? replenished you're right yep and so maybe there are a few universal languages prescriptions. of the soul yes universal yeah. prescriptions but um you know so maybe the one thing for you if you are wondering like gosh what feeds my soul maybe start with nature if it's possible for you to do that nature and stillness stillness i think in nature also right one. like mm -hmm. um yeah putting down the phone not yep. looking, not scrolling through the endless digital media, social media feeds. Right. Just be still and you and nature, you are nature. Hmm. We just love this topic. <laughs> okay, so we could go on and on, but we're not going to right no. now. We're going to no. wrap up this particular episode. Of course, we'll, we're going to revisit this topic forever and ever in various shapes and forms. Basically, ah, care for your soul. Spend time nurturing, nurturing your soul and connecting with the eternal because you are, you are part of that eternal that's expressing itself, mm -hmm. that happens to be expressing itself in a physical form right now. Yes. But you know you're more than that. Get your heart, get your soul. Because without your heart or your soul, there's really no life there. Right. You can have you can have the roof over your head, you can have the money in the bank account, but if you don't have your soul, where's the life? So here here for soul care, for life. <laughs> and we're wrapping up this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Sienna's laughing at me. <laughs> All right. So we're going to say bye for this episode. But of course, please, if you would like to sign up for our beautiful email of encouragement, 
please sign up at siennaandtoast.com. We'll also put the link in the show notes. And we are still working on our Life Club membership. Yes. So sign up for that too. Again, link in the show notes. And until next time, this is Sienna. And this is Toast. Telling you to love life, live free.